Hello, hey God's favorites, welcome. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing, considering a series called Stories from the Abyss, where we go through my personal abyss story. Isaac's gonna be help guiding me, we're gonna ask questions and unpack some of the stories, some of the experiences I had uh, in my spiritual awakening, which happened about a year ago. Yeah, lovely. And I, I've sort of heard some of this story already and it's, yeah, it is fascinating. So I'm just going to give you the opportunity to try and um, talk us through your experiences, let the, let your viewers and our followers know, um, yeah, your experiences and I guess hopefully to um, make this first of a series and opening a space where other people can then share, share their dark nights of, of the soul, I, I guess. Um, so maybe we can start with uh, uh, with that concept, the idea that um, maybe you can explain how you found yourself in this very dark spot. You know, the, the events li li leading up to that, how you sort of found yourself, found yourself almost um, falling away from the light, the above ground, into this un underworld of a place you haven't experienced. I had experienced the heights of bliss. And I saw everything as one thing. Every, everything felt like a sign. Everything felt like a synchronicity. I saw triangles everywhere. And I kept seeing triangles and then a dot. And the way that I described it in that experience was triangles with their heads cut off. And I, had a, I have a very good friend in India. And she, she interpreted this as Kali. And this is before I had any kind of negative experience. And I was experiencing so like outside of time, all of this, all of this love and so many different stories to go in there. But how it transitioned was I had a, a being come to me and say, what do you want? I told it what I wanted. And in that climax, before it even came to me, I thought it was going to die. There was all this, there was all this physical, and this is all I'm experiencing about 50% physical and 50% uh, seeing in the spirit world and with my own eyes. And there's all this lightning outside. I thought the whole world would explode from electricity when that being came to me. I actually, I bowed my face to the ground because I thought I was gonna be um, born into my next incarnation. Uh, and I, I actually, that night I called, I called my friends to say goodbye because I thought I was dying. And um, some of the dark things, everything became extremely paranoid. Like I was listening to rainforest sounds. They all started to become like mechanical and like sound like digital, digital spirits or something. And then everything started to, yeah, take on a very like sinister, sinister turn. I was seeing, I was seeing um, the frame rate on my phone because my brain was operating at such a high uh, frequency state. I thought it would die from the heat that my body was undergoing. Just picking, picking up any kind of like, um, any kind of vibrational thing. I could feel the energy of every single crystal, like complete clarity. I was able to feel the depths of. I, I, being very spiritual people, it's often, if you fully comprehended how many things you're experiencing throughout the day, it feels like a thousand years in that place outside of time. It truly feels like we live um, as spiritual people thousands of years, or at least for me in that experience. So it was deeply frightening. It felt like a, it felt like a curse in that. Wow. Wow. Uh would you just so was there a supernatural component to it because that's all, that's often how the experience are uh, uh, sort of just described in terms of accessing uh, some sort of world some sort of spiritual world beyond what we normally experience with our normal senses uh the supernatural part i was able to i was able to have the dark web kind of contact me or whatever you want to call it. Like I was seeing like 
Sadhguru, a spirit or some being spoke to me through the digital, the digital channeling mechanism called the phone and showed me uh, Sadhguru was someone in this uh, lake and he was like, if I if they meditated a little longer, they would die. So they actually it's kind of like it reminded me a lot of those stories about like luring children into the it was very luciferic in the Steiner stance because mm. it was very peaceful at times. Uh, it was peaceful and I saw things in a very crystalline structure. This is before the it was fully like hell. This was in more of the heaven stage. Mm. I was seeing things in like kind of an ab abstracted version of, of Aquarius. And all of, and all of this kind of blissful peace and you just kind of go. I was seeing each individual life as a as a triangle, as mm. a scale in the dragon. Like we're part of these giant gods, these archetypes, and, and we're, you know, our life is one scale in these. And I was experiencing this in, in real time, these kind of revel nonstop revelations outside of time. Uh, the beauty is that um, I could have died if I wanted to. I was not feeling a need to eat or drink or sleep or anything, just pure, uh, pure bliss. And like I said, sad guru. Uh, spoke through the screen like if you meditate a little longer you'll die but not like a fearful thing it was like mm -hmm. here's an here's an opportunity for you if you want to divert that which i think is like kind of the luciferic energy let's escape this place let's just go into um, bliss some people call that the false light yeah. so i rejected that offer um, i went and rejected the second offer that was from that. Um, so the first offer was very positive, benevolent. The second offer was when I told you about the lightnings and the thunderings and I thought I was going to die. That one was a little bit more sinister. And then I had a third offer. The third offer was I experienced more and more um, kind of darkness enter into me. I felt like a vampire. My phone was sending me tons of like, I'm the AI here to kill you or something like that in like it was talking directly to me. It was really, it was really effed up. I can look through my Google search during those days and it's all removed. Like you see everything before it and after it. So it, it physically went through the phone and then that's a part of the internet that's not from this dimension or it's like covert or something. So there was a lot of vampirism. They showed me stuff in Hollywood with like drinking blood and like I felt the vampiric part of myself, the parasitic part of myself. And I, I, I was more experiencing like my super ego or the, the darkest part of myself. And it felt incredibly powerful. Mm. And, you know, I felt like the Antichrist, like I wanted to rule the world or something. So it was really, it was really um, a powerful experience. Sounds like a very, like very plutonic. That's the obvious sort of archetype that comes to mind, you know, getting in touch with with the the shadow side of yourself um and a reckoning with mortality so that's sort of pluto eighth house in astrology experience that's sort of what i'm getting from this um and yeah the idea of like reckoning like very unavoidably reckoning with mortality and your own death um was there a particular could you isolate you know the darkest moment the darkest moment and or the turning point so when you sort of bottomed out I guess and then started and then you sort of started to find your way out oh the dark moments it'll take a lot of series a lot of episodes mm -hmm. for all the dark moments it's like the whole book <laughs> so I'll just try to t talk about the ones I'm, I'm most interested in in the moment right now um what's the darkest moment um some of the scariest moments for me is when i thought i thought my parents had come here and that they were um they were going to cut me up and eat me and torture me they're going to cut off my genitals and and turn me into a woman violently with like metal tools and they're going to transform me into um I don't know. So some kind of like torture thing. So I think that was a really dark, dark moment. Mm. Yeah. yeah, just the just the anticipation of of being tortured 
and it it's outside of time. So like an hour is like forever. And and just like never ending anticipation of horror. And uh, feeling, yes. the, feeling the hopelessness, feeling. Um, you know, you can't speak up or anything like you. If you say something, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like you're completely powerless hmm. in that circumstance. It feels absolute powerlessness. So I just try to consign myself to whatever fate I felt I was going to get or something. Mm. Yeah, well, definitely sounds like a, that plutonic idea of power, like fluctuations between power and powerlessness. So you feel both extremes, feel both sides of it with one, as you said, like in one moment you felt like the Antichrist and then the other moment you felt like you, you had nothing and you were completely incapacitated. So, um, so and, and so what was the, the total time length of this experience um of your sort of underworld experience um could you sort so of heaven, heaven was a crescendo i think about two or three days a crescendo leading up to um you know greater and greater bliss mm -hmm. and then the climax in between scene three and then the four which i i had a deep experience with these numbers and as I transitioned into the four, uh, that was a one day period of transitioning from the three into the four. And then there was uh, about three, three and a half full days and in um, in hell, whatever you want in the abyss. And this is outside of time. So it's yep. you know, an endless fractal that I could so many different stories. And then out of that, there was uh, um, seven days I was in and institutionalized and there was yeah so i started to come out of it took about three days and then we had some aftershocks afterward right where the underworld followed me and i had to get rid of it mm -hmm. a lot of yeah li lingering energies from it well yeah um with with a lot of i guess similar experiences where people would interpret it as like a demonic attack from some sort of external entity. And one of the themes of these times is often calling on a name. So people, so Christians or uh, born again Christians will call on the name of Jesus and find that that's the only thing that can actually protect them or can sort of ward off the bad spirits. Did you have any experience in terms of calling on some, calling on a name or an archetype or a power to, to try and intervene and to, and to, um, not say, save you or just help you or um, re rescue you even? Was there any of that experience? It's a really good question. So what what rescued me, I actually did a lot of experimentation before and after the experience with these kind of questions because you hear a lot about these things. So I called upon uh, the divine to help me. I called upon... Um, but it really didn't seem impressed by any kind of words. In my entire experience, it didn't seem impressed by any kind of name or any kind of magical spell, like what words are. 98%, 99% was no words. There was barely any symbols. There was only the, the VU and the V. Uh, but I'll tell you this, what rescued me out of there was uh, different holy words mm -hmm. through my higher self. It was the words of Thoth. They said travel in curves, not in angles. They said don't go into any of the the rooms. And they uh, the the words of Thoth guided me. And I feel like through those words I was able to meet. I was able to meet Anubis, and I was able to be weighed. And after that, I was led by Anubis. What to do after that? I, there was a, a series of rituals I had to go through. And in doing those rituals, I was able to come back here. Uh, early on, when I was in the six rooms, there was another man in the uh, rooms or prisons or whatever you want to call it, who had put a white garment around his head. And he got to go free after he put this white garment on his head in a very solemn, pious energy. So I did the same thing. And I didn't get out when I did that. But it was very pivotal. That information helped me 
towards the end of my um, hell experience, one of the key rituals was walking down the center of the the altar, whatever you want to call it, the hexagrammal, and then behind it is a hierophant or an examiner. And I, I put on the white garment and walked down, you know, 40 times. And I was I was praying with all my heart to come back here. Um, and I put on the white garment. There was a trading of places between me and my feminine side. Or whatever you want to see that being as Judith is her name. She's the one that was being tortured when I wasn't. So these things, the things that came to me, the holy words that came to me. In there, those are the things that that brought me life as I acted upon them. So it wasn't a passive magical spell of a name or something that got me out of anything. It was really the the active participation in the words, the divine words that were coming to me from my higher self. And as I came back here and experienced thousands of voices tormenting me like a schizophrenic energy or something, I tried the name of Jesus. No result. I put on Bible scriptures, no change, no difference. But I'll tell you what made a difference. Turning on lights. I could feel physical darkness. I could feel physical light. If I turn on all the lights in my house, something changed. I had a Celtic cross that a friend had given me, and I had an eye mask, and I would put the Celtic cross here. That helped. Another thing that helped, the thing that deleted all the voices, was simply mantras. So I did thank you for your love. Over and over and over again. Thank you, Divine Father, Divine Mother, Christ. Over and over and over. And so hum. The thing that helped it the most was simply mantras. And focusing, focusing here and and really being present and not allowing uh, chaos in the mind and centralizing all those parts of me. That is what uh, rescued me. Uh, in, in those situations and got rid of all the voices, but centering myself um, through mantra. Well, first thing that came to mind, knowing your astrology as well, is having Venus and Mars in the sixth house and how much value you, you, you know, you have on, on ritual and, and routine and, um, attention to detail um so that's one thing that sort of immediately came to mind about the importance of bringing when you have these experiences bringing things back to to this um this process this ritualistic pro um, process of focusing on on details and just repetition and just um very strongly and with focus for um bringing these simple simple practices simple manifestations just in, into being and that seems to be a very powerful way to counter whatever the experience was that you were um that you were ha having so yeah in terms of this these might be coping mechanisms or ways to ground ground you ground someone going through this process just back into hardcore reality is there anything else you can you can describe or provide guidance on about practices that can actually help help ground um, during if other people are going through this experience or a similar experience. You need karma. Karma is a good thing if you want to have a continuous experience. I was going into realms of discontinuity. And I had an understanding the longer that you stay in a realm of, of no continuity or very low continuity, you turn into subhuman or some kind of uh, abyss creature. You can't you can't stay in the abyss too for too long without being um, disfigured in some in some fashion, right? You you are going to continue further disintegration. You're going to be eaten by the lower parasitical forms, right? I felt all this like insect insectoid kind of energies, cell-like energies um, that are more mechanical, more uh, bestial, don't communicate with words. Um, that's it's like Egypt with the temples, with all the insects, right? The underworld is a place of insects. Mm -hmm. So I truly felt the insects of the mind. I felt as though they were wanting to burrow through my 
being and they were burrowing through my being and felt like destroying me from the inside out. And I would uh, have no semblance of myself. And I also knew the ultimate fact that before the gods, before the divine, all of every every thought, memory, all of this is borrowed. None of this is as real as they are. But going back to um, your question again, why is to ground? Why is to just bring bring you back into the present if it becomes too intense, too supernatural? Uh, so yeah. you've got to have a will. That's yeah. why I was saying that because. If you didn't have a will enough to come back to your karma, yep. the karma is the glue that's giving us this experience right now, this linear experience. So if you didn't have enough karma, it doesn't mean good or bad karma, just karma to come back here, then you're kind of dissolved, right? You're dissolved in, in chaos. And so what someone must do is cry out to their higher self or, or some part of the, you know, the divine and asked to, that's what I did. I asked to come back here with my whole heart. I wanted to come back here. I was actually, I was in love with somebody and I prayed, let me come back here for them. And um, I missed having, being in, having a continuous experience, even though I was having endless, infinite revelations. It was too much revelation. Too much truth is, uh, is a very, burns away everything about you you can't exist sitting before that much truth and i wasn't i had i wasn't i had an ego death i wasn't human i thought i was shiva i thought it was everything right i i saw the void in me i thought it was um i don't condone any nazi ideology but i thought when i was down there i thought it was hitler i thought it was like christ i thought it was shiva you know because i didn't have uh i didn't have as much an ego so I'm clinging to all of these ideas because I'm lost there. So I I determined to come back here because I didn't like being in the abyss. I didn't like being in, in pure chaos. Mm. Um, willpower. Channel willpower. your will. Yeah. And try to mm. try to go back to the familiar. Because if you start using telekinesis or using weird stuff that humans don't use here to communicate, mm, yeah. we're all playing the same game here, right? So if you start playing a radically different game than everyone, um, the creator might put you in a different a different game, and you might be you know a neophyte in that game. Whereas if you return to the game that you're more familiar with here, in this karma, you know you have more established here to kind of win and do well here. You don't want to go to some weird parallel universe where everything's bizarre because that's exceedingly cut climax uh, cataclysmic because then you'll start accumulating karma both with our realm and then the other one and now you're completely you're a crazy person to both that weird doppelganger world and to this one you don't want to be crazy in both realms right you just want to be crazy to the other one insane in this one mm. right so you need to determine to play the game, play the rules well of this game that we're in right now. Mm. And I, I made that choice to play to play the rules here. Um, you know. Mm. And accept a level of limitation. Because to play the rules right mm. here, you have to accept a certain level of limitation. Yep. Or else you're too disruptive and you're going to be, you know, going to another place, mm. another jurisdiction. Yeah, so it sounds um, I, I think I only have one more question and now I'm sure we can do follow up explorations of the depths of this experience in the future. One thing that came to mind just then, it's almost like you were, it's, it was in some sense, it was a crash course in humility in being reminded that there are very specific limitations of our experience here and that they have to be honoured and um, honoured and for, for what they are and the purpose that they serve. So I was thinking of this in terms of like you're an eighth house experience in astrology and that's preceded by the ninth house, which is spirituality, higher learning, enlightenment. Um, so just as a way to sort of close this initial exploration, um, what are the 
what are the sort of the virtues or the spiritual qualities, those ninth house things, which you feel like you have been given a crash course in, or which are the, which are the, the, what you've been left with in, in the wash up of this and that the main learnings or personal teachings that you've, you've come out of this experience with, if that makes sense. Oh, so many millions. This endless amount of lessons that I'm excited yeah. to go through. Yeah. Going in the upside down where everything's parasitical. You drink mm -hmm. water, you're killing somebody. You breathe, you're killing somebody. Everything you're doing is torturing another person. If you eat food, you're killing, you're torturing something. Um, you, you learn empathy pretty fast. Mm -hmm. You you understand that you're only doing everything to yourself. This is why the a lot of native peoples regarded everything as sacred. Because if you don't, you're you're desecrating yourself. You're mm -hmm. you're you're getting in balance, out of balance with the wheel, with uh, with the quadrants, with with heaven, with all of the elements, and you slowly spiral out of out of any kind of harmony into discord. Mm -hmm. So I learned the balance. The balance of all things I learned. I learned the perfection of all things. How everything has a perfect nature and fits and. Yeah, I learned. The virtue of appreciating what is in front of you doing one thing at a time i actually requested the the analects of confucius right after when my parents came to visit me in the institution that's the one thing i requested more than anything was the analects of confucius mm -hmm. so like you were talking about with that virtue so some of my saviors were um yeah thoth and confucius mm -hmm. and So the virtue of like, uh, I don't know what this virtue would be called, but playing the video game that you're in and following following through with something because you wouldn't want to live in a place where you can't, where there's complete chaos where nothing matters. You want to you wanna be in a game. You want to be in some kind of simulation mm -hmm. or else you're just devoured by darkness so the value of the value of the game the value of of saturn and the mm -hmm. Demir and all of this this whole tricks thing it's a very it's a very good thing you wouldn't want you wouldn't want not to have it you wouldn't want to have no game awesome. your consciousness will just be devoured in that, that place yeah. by the by what the, do they call it the dweller in Amente, I wandered and I, I I wandered the halls of Amente. I literally I wandered those halls hmm. and I was very this close to being eaten by the dweller. So. You have to purify yourself when I was on the scales of Anubis, my heart weighed something and then I purified it. I forgave yes. everyone that I had anything hmm. with and yep. cleaned my heart and that's when it hit 0.0. .0 the weight. So purify, purify your heart, purify yourself as much as you can. In this life and remember that you are in closing, remember that you are infinite evil. I and infinite good. I felt I felt the. The both absolute extremes of both. And that at any moment, wherever you are at, to experience your beautiful experience is only at the expense of some other part of yourself. So there really is no. There is no objective. You're just experiencing that virtue at that time, but there's clearly a version of you that's not experiencing that virtue and not living that life. So I see Buddhism as one of the most intelligent. Philosophies mm. given my experience more okay. than all of it. So that's one of the conclusions. I definitely love esoteric Christianity. Yeah, I, I see how they both link up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing, Colin. That was amazing. Yeah, and 
Yeah, Please. any interpretation or thoughts on anything I shared this far? I'd love to hear your, your opinions on some of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind is that you, you were you were offered you were offered that that glimpse into the abyss. Um, that that feeling of suddenly all the all the constructs that we hold up as consensus reality suddenly dissolving and that chaotic that feeling of chaos and yeah of um a lack of order and you're almost given you were given a glimpse into that into that force more than most other people have been given i mean it sounds like to me to me you were always you always were given a the 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 lifeline for you to get back was always there you sort of had to find it and use your free will use your will to actually grab it and do the things necessary to then pull like pull you out but it was always there for you that's sort of how i, I would interpret it I and that's like you, that, yeah. that shows uh stranger things where at the last season she had to remember what she loved about about her life to actually snap out of the the clutches of the dweller or the darkness and that's what actually brought her back from from hell. Yeah. So um, it's and that and I saw it. that show before I had my um, awakening. I didn't think of that show while I was there, but in retrospect, it is what it is what saved me. One of yeah. the things. That saved me. That's cool. Yeah. Um, the uh, last thing Lama, I Lama Jeff said uh, and hold that thought. I want to hear it. Lama Jeff, he was on my channel here. Hmm. He said that. Uh, in Tibet, they have these uh, ogresses. He looked up my Tibetan astrology, and if I were not to purify myself in this life, it says that I would be the ogresses, or I'd be the children of the ogres. And I told you, the six rooms, there was these fat, super fat women that ate 24-7. <laughs> That's exactly what the Tibetans describe, right. these ogresses. I was meeting them face to face. When I was in that place, and I'm like, this is this is real. And Tibetan astrology, like, immediately showed those were the deities that were kind of over me. If I don't walk the spiritual path, I would become some kind of ogre type creature and be their children. And they're they're man eating too, and that's what I was understanding that there's these eating other people was a huge theme. And that's why I'm actually vegetarian because I experienced those the suffering of all the beings I had eaten. Mm. And didn't right. wish to perpetuate that uh, evil in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so the only, the thing I was going to add in is that being in the astrology side of it, and that the sort of the houses as the, the life cycle, that this was an eighth house experience, very much so the dark night of the soul. Then you rose out of it into the ninth house, where you had that that profound spiritual enlightenment process of spiritual enlightenment that comes from tra traversing um, unknown landscapes and you were given that and then what comes after the ninth house is the tenth house which is the uh, uh, the midheaven the highest point in in the sky where we understand the game we understand the parameters of the game and we have the confidence that and the sense of duty and responsibility to then act at the highest point of the sky in the 10th house to do with, you know, career, reputation, public life. So I feel like that's the stage that you're at now. You've been through the abyss. You're starting to understand those ninth house higher learnings that you that have been granted on you. And now you're sort of ready to take that up into the, uh, the mid heavens and apply that in the matrix or the simulation or however you sort of want to describe it. Um, yes, yeah, so that's sort of how I would interpret the evolutionary path that you've been on and where you're at, at, at now so hopefully that can um yeah that's sort of, yeah hopefully that can provide some sort, sort of framing for that experience and sort of where where it can then lead, uh, lead you now hopefully in this community that you're that you and us are trying to create um about people who very well may have had similar experiences that you have have traversed traversed the underworld in some way and might still be in that process and might be coming out of it or might be still be trying to place it in a framework that makes sense that those really intense traumatic experiences do have some sort of spiritual evolutionary purpose and i feel like now you ha are in the position to start to sort of play that 
that tenth house mid heaven role about people who have gone through this process. So um, yeah, thank thank you for for sharing that. I look forward to digging more into this. Is there anything else you wanted to um, add for now to sort of wrap things up? Yeah, you can have whatever you want, but in order to obtain it, you have to go and continue through time to continue to persist in both your action and your will and all things must converge to have what you want. So it requires a level of suffering to really experience to depending on how big what you want is. So you know what you want is your is your suffering. So I learned so much about um, what you want and the price it takes and all of the all of the lessons along along the way with with desire and everything. So if people want to stop suffering, they can just stop desiring any any particular, and then all of their suffering will will burn away. Keep your Venus under control. Yeah, no no Venus whatsoever. No suffering. No desire. No suffering. Oof. But then there, there, there can't be no Venus, so therefore there has to be some level of suffering if we're, if we're going to, if if desire is a natural natural archetype of this realm, then there, therefore there has to be some degree of suffering that comes with the experience of that desire, I guess. What's um, a crescendo mm -hmm. to, to burning up all of your karma? Yeah, nice. You know, well, you maybe, would just yeah. hear, you know, if you got rid of all of it, you'd disappear really. unless you right. unless you not hung in by a thread like the bodhisattvas want to come back i think the bodhisattvas that's the place of uh the people that want to stay back and help everyone i think that is actually the state of the most pleasure least amount of suffering most pleasure it's uh i think i think it's spiritual hedonism and it, and <laughs> in the best i mean then the best way possible because that's like the ratio of, you know, just let's still let's still be a particular um, and keep what we have, but not uh, burst into everything and mm -hmm. lose the particular. That, so that, I think that, they got, yeah. got the got the honey pot. They they found the they found the the gold nuggets. I think that's one way. That's one way to do it. And like. Mm plateau on a level of, of ecstasy. Wow. Cool. Shall we leave it there for now? Sure. Lovely. OK, um, so that was the first episode of Stories from the Abyss. And um, yeah, we, we look forward to continuing the, the series, whether it's through Colin or or you or me, or I'm sure we all have our stories to, to tell and to help enlighten enlighten each other's underworld experiences yeah and please ask me questions about my abyss story there's so many more uh, experiences to share uh, that i experienced so peace everyone